Welcome to Som Arl, the level 53 to 54 dungeon atop the Dravanian Forelands. This video's intention is to guide you through the bosses found within. As for the trash packs, this time around they are very simple avoidance AoEs that can be pulled in separate packs or in groups depending on your confidence and your party. This dungeon is part of your main story scenario at level 53 and is a requirement to progress further into it. So without further ado, let's make our way to the first boss. Raskovnik. Raskovnik is your atypical Ochu plant type boss. That's a lot of poisonous damage and AoEs to avoid if you didn't know. Abilities wise, Raskovnik will cast Acid Rain occasionally. This is an AoE circle that spawns under players feet that we'll have to move out of. Surprise, surprise. Sweet Scent, which is an ability that spawns Hornet adds that don't actually attack the players. But if they make their way from the side of the platform to the boss, they allow the boss to stack a damage buff so that when he pulls a player in, he will do damage based on these stacks. Yet, this is completely laughable, and you should really completely ignore them and focus on the boss. It's completely healable through, and it doesn't really stack anywhere near as high as it should to actually cause you any problems. The boss, again, won't be really alive long enough for the stacking damage to be any real problem, and even if he is, the damage in general is completely manageable, even for a new healer. Aside from those two abilities, the last is a room-wide AoE called Spit, which is easily healed through and is unfortunately unavoidable. I'm confident that any group will be able to clear this boss fairly easily, as it's literally tank and spank aside from a few AoE circles to step out of, which by now in the game you should be used to. Next up, a little later through quite a bit of trash that we have, uh, we actually get to Myath. This dinosaur looks like something straight out of Monster Hunter in my opinion, and is a pretty fun fight. So this is the first real add priority fight in Heavensward that you get to. Occasionally throughout the fight, Myaf will shout uh, in the room and it will cause slime adds to spawn around the platform. Your main focus should be green adds as soon as they spawn. Once green is dead, you should prioritize red slimes, then blue slimes. That is green, red, then blue. Green, red, blue. Easy peasy. The reason for this priority is that Myaf will eat these adds uh, periodically and gain an attack based on the colour he eats. If Myaf gets peckish for a cheeky Nando's but all that's left is a blue ad, he'll put a blue arrow on someone's head in your party. This person needs to not be near anyone else as it will place a um, massive explosion where they're standing after a few seconds. However, if Myaf instead decides on a McDonald's instead and eats a red arrow, he will place a red arrow above a random player's head. This red arrow needs to be stacked on to split the damage of another AoE or they'll likely either die or be close to death. And that's pretty much the fight. Green is evil and needs to die, red then blue. Next boss, and indeed the final boss of this wonderful instance, is my favourite, Tioman. Tioman is a massive dragon that's pretty pissed that you decided to come into his cave. As such, he wants to melt your face with various powerful abilities. First on the list of things you need to do is for the tank to face the big guy away from the group. Abyssic Buster is a moderate damage frontal cleave, which is the only real poke your damage health bar should take as a direct damage uh, to worry about in this entire fight. Occasionally, Tioman will cast Chaos Burst, which places a column and circle AoE on each player, which you'll need to step out of as soon as possible, as they do quite a lot of damage. But the real meat and potatoes of his abilities come through Comet. Comet is an ability where the boss will mark two players with a green symbol above their head. Players will spawn massive circles that pulse where they were standing when the buff faded. They have a few seconds to move as far away from the circle as possible before they explode. That's actually a lot easier than it sounds. So what we did, we put a marker at the back of the room and made it so that both marked players run to that area, drop the debuff and run back to the boss. Nobody gets damaged if they're fast enough and it also prevents damage to those who are unmarked. So that's pretty much that mechanic completely sorted. All you have to remember is move to the mark with the green thing and then move away when it fades. At 45% health, Tioman becomes invincible and cannot take damage himself. Instead, his wings are now attackable. You focus one wing and then the other, so prioritize one, whichever the other people are fighting, and then kill that and then go on the other one. Once both are dead, he will become attackable again. However, during the fight where you can only attack his uh, wings, Tioman will begin to cast an ability called Dark Star, which is a room-wide AoE that needs to be healed through. So the faster you kill the wings, the sooner this phase will be over, and the more likely you are to survive it, and the less Dark Stars you have to heal through. 
After the wing phase, it's back to the other AoEs and mark mechanics until the boss dies. That's pretty much it. Probably one of the most enjoyable dungeon bosses so far I fought in Heavensward, but I'm sure there's plenty more to come and I'm going to love every last one of them. Hopefully, however, this video helps you out and I look forward to the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.